It's a question as old as time itself, an enigma which predates dates. A puzzle that has plagued the mind of man for millennia, and also a topic that stirs quite the heated debate online. No, I'm not talking about why most toilets flush in the key of E-flat, I'm talking about which is cheaper, buying or renting? What's up guys, my name is Mike, and there are a plethora of videos out there already about this topic, many of which Brittany and I watched before buying this house while we were doing our research. And while a lot of them go into the mathematics behind, you know, buying versus renting, and they go through some, some detailed examples. None of the videos that we watched gave the viewer instructions on how to calculate which would be better for their specific situation. Hence where this video comes in. And my hope is that by the time you're done watching this, you'll have a much better idea of how to calculate this for yourselves, which would be better either buying or renting. So when comparing the cost of renting versus buying, there is definitely the money aspect of it, which is what this video is mainly going to be about. But there are also a ton of other variables and trade-offs to consider, which I also want to mention because if I did not feel like I'd be doing you guys a disservice with this video. For example, would you mind sharing walls and living within 20 feet of potentially four, five, 10 other people? Or do you prefer to have a bit more privacy? Another question, how sensitive are you to noise? Do you mind hearing those around you or would you prefer a bit more peace and quiet? The reason I ask this is because when Brittany and I were living in an, in an apartment, we had somebody living above us, below us, you know, just the three sides of our apartment and you know, obviously across the hallway and we could hear all of them. And, and if you're somebody who's sensitive to, to, you know, to noise throughout the day or maybe you work from home or maybe you're a light sleeper or something like that, that's definitely a variable to consider. Now, of course, if you rent a house over an apartment, you can kind of mitigate all the noise, you know, from sharing walls with people and things like that and have a bit more privacy and peace and quiet. But renting a house also comes with trade-offs. It's usually, at least in Brittany's in my area, rent for a house is typically like over twice as much as it would be per month versus the mortgage on the same house. But to some people that may be worth it. Other questions to ask yourself or other variables that come into play are, you know, like how long are you planning on living in your specific area? A couple years, two or three years, or five or more years? That's going to play into the decision of whether to buy or rent. And how much responsibility do you mind having? Because buying a house comes with a lot more responsibility than renting a house or renting an apartment does. Usually when you rent, like, you know, the, the landlord is responsible for anything that breaks. And if you buy, everything's on you, unless you buy new construction, like you have warranties, but, but those warranties eventually run out. So all of those variables play into, you know, which is, which is a better or cheaper decision, buying or renting. It's not just the money aspect, although that's the big one. You know, there, there's also the quality of life aspect that has to be heavily weighed into the decision to either buy or rent. And that's based on an individual's tastes, personality traits, desires, etc., things like that, and will ultimately vary from person to person. So long story short, everyone's situation is going to be different. There's not going to be a one, you know, one size fits all answer here. But when only talking about money, there is more or less of an exact way to calculate, okay, this is exactly how much it's going to cost to rent, and this is exactly how much it's going to cost to buy. And that's what the rest of this video is going to be about, exactly what Bruni and I did to calculate how much it's going to cost for us to continue renting at our apartment, and how much it would cost for us to, to, to buy a house, and why we ultimately decided to buy. First, we looked at our goals for the future and decided about how much time we would likely be staying in our area. And this is the first step we would recommend if you're trying to decide whether to buy or to rent. And if you're buying, our recommendation is that should be predicated upon you having at least a three month emergency fund. The reason being is that when you rent, the only possible upfront cost you may have is an application fee. Mm. Contrast that with when you buy a home, you have a ton of upfront costs in what are called closing costs. And closing costs can be up to 3% of the purchase price of the home. Those are on top of the, the actual home's price that you're paying for. And then when you want to sell the home, you have to pay another 3% fee. In real estate agent commissions, which is basically like you paying the real estate agent to help you sell the home, on top of the sale price of the home, and possibly even more closing costs if you and the buyer negotiate closing costs into the deal. So when you buy and subsequently sell a home, you're paying 6% or more in fees on top of the price of the home that you don't get back. And it only makes financial sense to do that if you're gonna be in the home long enough to recoup those fees while the home's value goes up year over year. This exact amount of time will vary from housing market to housing market and also largely depends on the economy, but the general consensus for real estate experts is five years. So if you're planning on being in an area for less than five years, it probably wouldn't make financial sense to buy. It would make more financial sense to rent. In Brittany's in my case, the largest of our goals is to be able to move back to Hawaii and not have to rely too heavily on the job market in Hawaii just because the job market in Hawaii is totally different than it is here where we live currently. In order to do this, the plan we've laid out for ourselves is to develop a few sources of 
online slash passive slash investment income that we can rely on so we're much more mobile in terms of where we can go and work. We determined that creating these sources of income would probably be more like a three to four to five year venture rather than a one to two year venture. So therefore buying made a lot more sense in our case than renting would because we're gonna be here for a little bit longer. If however, we foresaw that creating those income sources would be like one to two years instead of five, then it would have made more sense for Brittany and I to rent than buy. Second, we made a series of calculations and these would be good for anyone to take a look at just to know where you stand financially. The first calculation we made was we determined how much house we could afford. Now, Brittany and I didn't want to spend more than 25% of our monthly income on our mortgage, everything included. So in our case, that came out to between $1,500 to $1,700 per month that we could spend on a mortgage. So what we ended up doing was looking at homes in this price range and below. We also looked at how much money we would be saving per year while renting because this was really important for us, as we mentioned earlier, to build up our passive sources of income. Yeah, basically all the all of our savings, or not all of them maybe, but a lot of our savings potential is, is going to be going toward creating these passive income sources. And the more money we can save per year, the faster we can create, and the faster we can build up those income streams, and the faster we can get back to Hawaii. The third thing we calculated was how much our new cost of living would be if we were to buy a house, and how much that would affect our yearly savings ability. Our new cost of living would be important because that would affect our emergency fund, and if our cost of living were to increase, our emergency fund would also have to increase with it. It would also be important to figure out what our new savings potential would be, and how much that would offset our ability to fund those income streams. So while we were renting, Brittany and I were able to save about $41,000 more or less. And I'll link that video up here if you guys are interested in it. It goes into detail about how, how we save that much money per year. But we calculated after buying the house that we were in or something similar in price tag, that savings rate would go down to about $35,000 a year, which we were more than fine with. The fourth and final calculation, boys and girls, get ready. We're about to enter the realm of mathematics here, pretty <laughs> hardcore. The fourth calculation was calculating how much it would cost to continue renting our apartment over the next five years versus how much it would cost to buy a house and have a mortgage over five years. So to demonstrate how we did this, we're gonna open up Microsoft Excel and I'm gonna show you guys basically piece by piece how we compare the numbers and how we ultimately decided that buying would be cheaper over the next five years. Okay, so we've got Excel pulled up on the screen here. We're gonna go over renting first because that's pretty easy to figure out. So basically for rent, we calculated what our average rent would be over five years, assuming you know, a consistent increase in rent year over year. We, I just used an average number of $1,250 per month. Um, our renter's insurance was $12 around there per month. So if you multiply that over the course of five years, you get a total of $75,720 to continue renting over a five year time, time span. Okay, buying. This is a lot more complicated as you guys can see to go through. There are a lot more pieces involved in this. There are so many variables that can be involved in buying a house that's very, very individual dependent, depending on like your personal circumstances and things like that. I'm just gonna go over the main parts in Bernie's and my specific situation. We also made a very, very detailed video about all the costs involved in buying a home. I will link that up here. If you guys are interested in that, it's like very detailed. And if you really wanna understand everything that goes into buying a home, check that video out after this one's done, of course. The first thing that I put here that's involved in buying a home is closing costs. And in Bernie's in my case, it was almost $10,000, $9,884. That was just a one-time payment we paid at closing when we purchased our home. That's not monthly, it was just one time. The next thing is a mortgage. Our mortgage payment is $1,449.01 per month. If you average that over the course of five years, you get $86,940.60. Now within the mortgage payment itself is principal, interest, and property taxes and homeowner's insurance. Now the principal, even though we're paying that out in a mortgage payment, that's kind of going back to us. We're just kind of putting that toward the home and we're not giving that up to anybody else. And then principal adds up to a little over $28,000 over the course of five years. So over the course of five years, Brittany and I will have put a little over $28,000 into our home, which we should hopefully get back, if not get back more than that, after five years is over. Right. The next part here is interest. Interest is just gone, out the window. It's basically the, the price that Bernie and I are paying to borrow the bank's money so we could move. $49,455.82. The next item on the list is property taxes and insurance. Over the course of five years, that comes out to $9,384.92. We don't get that back either. Uh, this next item I just estimated, 
Brittany and I have a warranty on pretty much everything in our house for one year. Some yeah. some items we have a warranty for two or three years on. This nine thousand dollars is just just a number. I mean, it, it could be things breaking that weren't covered under warranty, or things that break after our warranty is over. Lawn maintenance, uh, pest control, random things, things like that. Nine thousand dollars. That's just a guess. Hopefully, it doesn't come anywhere close to that, but it's there. So, total over five years, one hundred and five thousand. $824.96. But this is not the only part of buying a home. Let's go down to the discount section. So yeah. because we're bundling our homeowner's insurance with our auto insurance, we get a $15 a month discount on those. So discounted over five years, that comes out to be a $900 discount that we that we save. The next item is we get to write off our, our mortgage interest on our taxes. Over the course of five years, that's gonna save us $12,363.96 in taxes. And of course, I'm adding the principal we're putting into the home as a discount because I don't want to I don't want to put I don't, I don't want to count that twice because we're 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 not giving that to anyone. We're basically just paying ourselves. It's just going to be wrapped up into the house. Total discounts come out to $41,363.82, which means our net cost to own this home over 5 years is $64,461.14, which is significantly less than it would cost to continue renting our apartment. $11,258.86 less. Now, if you're wondering where we got these numbers, you know, just the principal, just the interest and everything else, this is from an amortization table. If you just Google mortgage calculator, you can type in your specific loan information or the, the information on a home that you're looking at, interest rate, property taxes, although property taxes aren't calculated in amortization. It's just the, it's just the mortgage. But this table is where I got that information. Mortgagecalculator.org is a very good website. It's a website that I used a lot when, when doing all these calculations for Brittany and I to mm -hmm. see which is cheaper and what, what would make sense paying, what wouldn't make sense paying. But yeah, amortization table is basically how we broke down the cost over five years because the, the principal and the interest amounts that you're paying month by month and year by year change. Like over time, your interest goes down and your principal that you're paying every month goes up. Mm -hmm. So those, those aren't consistent. All right, so in conclusion, there were many things that went into Bernie's and my decision to buy a house rather than continue renting the apartment that we were in. It was not just money, but money was a big part of it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there's personal taste, quality of life, you know, preference personality traits, things like that, that went into it. And that was definitely the case with Brittany and I, aside from the money. That being said, we bought a house because it made sense with the time frame that Brittany and I were looking at. Yeah. We have a lot more space to move around. Our apartment was like 750 square feet, something like that. We had more peace of mind and quiet. We didn't have to hear our neighbors all the time, which was a big bonus for us. Um, we also were paying into something that would hopefully appreciate in value and would grow as an investment. Yeah, and that, that's something I didn't mention in these calculations. The average house appreciation year over year for our area is about 2%. Yielding that over five years, that's like, I don't know, 10% or so. Hopefully appreciation over the course of five years, which would net us about an extra $30,000 that, that we would not have gotten if we stayed in our apartment. That's obviously assuming that the market does okay moving forward. Who knows if that's going to happen with all this stuff going around right now. But And also, financially, buying a house was over $11,000 less expensive over five years than renting an apartment would have been, or continue, continuing to rent our apartment. And, uh, and that's why we ultimately decided to buy a house, all those reasons combined. So that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It took a lot of planning. A lot of filming, a lot of going back and forth. Of all the videos on our channel right now, this is the one that has taken the longest to make by far. So if you enjoyed it, please, please destroy that like button. It helps out tremendously. Leave a comment, share with your friends, share with anybody you think this, this, this information could help. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, we will see you guys next time. Bye.